Okay, welcome everyone. Hi, I am uh, Jennifer Brown, and I'm here to teach uh, the Lunch and Learn today, Healthy for Your Heart. So February is American Heart Health Month, as you can see. Uh, I've got my Zoom background from the American Heart Association. And last Friday, the first Friday of February is always Wear Red Day to help promote awareness about heart disease and overall heart health. So I'm going to um, mute everyone. If you have any questions, please um, just type them into the chat. I will unmute you at the end if you have anything else to, to say or to ask. And I'll try to answer the chat questions as we get, uh, as we go. But if not, I'll make sure I put them uh, answer them at the end, as well as after this workshop, I will send a follow-up email to all of you this afternoon that will have the recording from today's session and will have uh, any handouts or any other information that we kind of touch on. So um, this presentation is kind of put together by resources from the American Heart Association. So I was sitting down kind of working on this and I said the American Heart Association on their website, heart.org has a lot of fact sheets and information and they call them infographics. So they're informational graphics. Um, so what I did is I kind of, you know, grabbed a, a lot of them and put them in this presentation because instead of me making these, you know, uh, really creative slides or whatever, it's already out there. And I want to make sure you know the resources that the American Heart Association has. So I'm going to share some of their infographics with you, as well as a lot of information about heart disease. And I will email you a PDF copy of the PowerPoint. So you, you will have all of those infographics or informational fact sheets. Okay, so let's get started. So why all of you are probably here is either you or someone you know has heart disease, or you're just concerned about possibly getting heart disease. So one of the things that we recommend, uh, you know, people do to help with heart disease is eating a well-balanced diet. Even if you're not concerned about heart disease or diabetes, eating healthy or well-balanced diet is something that, you know, is recommended to, for anyone. Part of the reason is heart disease and um, stroke are the number one and number three killers. Okay, so a lot of people, when I talk to them about what's, you know, one of the leading cancer uh, causes of death, they say cancer, because you probably know somebody who has cancer. And that's, that's not true. Even if you put all of the cancers to, together, uh, heart disease still kills more people. So it's that deadly of a thing. Now you hear more about cancer because people go through treatment and you know they, they might lose their hair or just different things like that. So I'm not saying it's not um, you know, harmful or anything like that, but heart disease is kind of one of those silent killers. It sneaks up on you and you don't realize that you're having problems until you have a heart attack or a stroke. And some of those things, if they're bad enough, it's something you never recover from, um, or at least you have to live with, uh, you know, leftover remnants, you know, or side effects of a stroke, whether it's, you know, not being able to talk as much, having problems with mobility, different things like that. So one of the reasons that's important to eat a well-balanced diet is it helps you with uh, four out of the six risk factors for some of these diseases. So just eating healthy is going to help you maintain a healthy weight, help you keep a good cholesterol levels, good blood pressure, and good blood glucose or blood sugar levels. So those are four of the top risk factors for developing heart disease. So if you're eating better, then you are hopefully not having problems with those four things. The other two risk factors for heart disease is being physically uh, active or inactive and then uh, smoking or being exposed to smoking or tobacco products. But just eating healthy or eating a heart healthy diet can help you with four of the six factors. So that's why it's extremely important. But even if you're not at risk, you know, you don't have a family history, you're not overweight, still eating well, not smoking and being physically active or something we're always going to recommend to you. So let's get into uh, some of the kind of the infographics here. So the American Heart Association gives eight steps to prevent heart disease and stroke. So the first things first is whether you're at risk or not, you know, knowing that. 
um, you know, looking at your, your, your age, looking at um, your family history, uh, understanding, you know, where do you line up on those risk factors? Do you eat well? Do you have high cholesterol? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you smoke? You know, all of these things are going to make you more at risk. So what can you do to deal with those risk factors? So you first have to uh, know your risk. So there is a calculator. It's a check change control calculator. So it's a CCCC, I think I said that, three C's calculator um, on the heart.org website. And you kind of can put in your information, answer their questions, and it will tell you your risk, you know, how, uh, how much you are at risk for having a cardiovascular event, a heart attack, a stroke, uh, you know, something dealing with your heart, you know, heart health issues over the next 10 years. Now, and that's a calculator, you know, you might want to just go online and fill that out and check it out. And every couple of years, do it again. See if your risk factors have, have changed, if you're more at risk. So first find out if you're at risk, and then it's going to kind of tell you what you need to work on. Do you need to work on a healthy diet? And the heart.org website, you'll notice on this uh, handout right here in the, the right section of each little bullet there, it has a website in, in the red area. So there's an entire section on the page that talks about eating smart or eat smart, um, you know, and what that, what that means. And it has a variety of different fact sheets or information tips underneath just that one section. There's videos, there's recipes, uh, there's links to other sites that have good information. Um, so just taking a look on, on their website. And again, I'll send you that, that heart.org link in, in the email. So eating healthy diet, we're going to talk more about that, of course. Being physically active. Adults are supposed to be active 150 minutes a week. Um, so 30 minutes, roughly five days a week. You can break it up however you want. If you want to do you know, 30 minutes, uh, if you want to do three, ten, you know, segments of 10 minutes each, um, you can also do less exercise if you're doing higher intensity. So the 150 minutes is for moderate intensive le um, levels. But if you do more vigorous, you know, it's the difference between walking and jogging and running, basically. So the more you can get up on that scale there, the more vigorous you're doing it then you can do less time. You only have to do 75 minutes of vigorous intensive activities each week. So if you're already somewhat active, just trying to increase that, getting more time or increasing the intensity to give you uh, more benefits. If you're not active, get started however you can, even if it's just, I'm gonna exercise five minutes a, a day. If you're, you're you know like me, I've been working from home this past year uh, and so, Instead of me out and about running around my office, going down the hall, up and down the stairs, I'm just working for my computer. So I'm pretty much sitting all day. So it's, it, you know, I have to even increase my exercise even more to um, offset the amount of time that I'm sitting. I hate sitting, but that's just part of, you know, my job is on the computer right now. So I have to, to kind of do that. Um, yeah, you know, if you can get up early in the morning and walk or, you know, exercise early, I like exercising in, in the morning and then just kind of getting it over with, you know, it's, uh, it's out of my mind. I don't have it hanging over me for the rest of the day and I can go take my shower and I feel good for the rest of the day. If I don't do it first thing in the morning, a lot of times I'll do it at night. I get my kids in bed and it's kind of, a, okay, let's unwind. So I go exercise and then I'll take my shower and then go, go to bed. So there's different ways you can do it. Whatever works um, for you guys uh, is, is perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, just being more physically active. And if you're more physically active and you're eating better than, you know, watching your weight. I do weigh myself. Um, I have a scale here at my house. And when I teach programs, we usually teach weekly programs. And every week uh, somebody comes in, um, you know, my office for a program, get on the scale. You know, if, if it's a weekly program and we're weighing you every week, that's the first thing we do. So that's something I try to, to do. I do get on the scale at least once a week, but I don't just focus on that because I know that if I'm working out, I might be toning up. So I might be building muscle. 
Um, but I can tell a difference maybe in, in my pants. My pants might be looser, even though the scale isn't changing any. So I'll take a waist circumference. I'll get a little measuring tape and I'll put it right around uh, my stomach, you know, my waist area, my belly button, and I'll see how many inches I am. And I'll see if I'm losing inches, even if I'm not losing weight. So no matter what kind of physical activity you're, you're getting, um, you know, it, it, it's good for you. And even if you're not seeing a weight change, being physically active is something you need to do no matter if you're overweight or if you're not. It's just to help your heart and to help everything run smoothly. So no matter what kind of exercise you're doing, and we're gonna talk more about the different types of exercise, but um, yes, a, a treadmill is just as fine as, as walking. It might be even safer for you if, um, you know, outside right now it's really cold. And I know if you're, um, you know, if you don't have paved walkways or you're on a dirt road, it's, it's not smooth walking and you could, it could be a trip hazard. So maybe walking on the treadmill is, is safer for you. You don't even have to have a treadmill. Just, you know, you can just walk in place. I've attended a lot of Zooms this year and I'll, I'll usually keep my uh, camera off, but I'll just be walking in place or I'll be lifting some weights while I'm listening to what they're saying. And even if you don't feel like doing that, just standing up. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm standing up um, just so it gives me an hour where I'm not sitting down. Um, so these are just some, some basic, uh, the, the first four tips there. So some of the other steps, again, being tobacco free, stop smoking or stop using tobacco products. If you need help with that, again, the Heart Health, uh, American Heart Association has a, a page about that, but North Carolina has what's called the quit line. So it's, it's a 1-800, I think it's like 1-800-QUIT-NOW. I can get that um, website and information for you as well and put it in the, the PowerPoint. But if you need help, they have uh, people on hand to help answer your questions, to give you kind of that support network that maybe that's what you need to help stop smoking. And then managing your conditions. So you know if you have heart disease or if you just have things that are kind of, um, you know, beginning stages of heart disease. Yes, I have high blood pressure or I have high cholesterol. Diabetes is also very closely linked to heart disease. So um, a lot of people who have diabetes die from heart disease. So if you have any of these conditions, it's gonna make you more at risk to have even further heart health issues. So managing that, if your doctor tells you to, to take some pills, take some pills. If your doctor tells you to eat more fruits and veggies, to exercise more, these are the things that I'm telling you as well. You probably have heard them before, but you know, focusing on whatever they say to, to manage that particular uh, condition. If you have a specific condition that you want more information about, I can help you. We do have programs for people who are pre-diabetic, who are diabetic. Um, we have plenty of handouts on high blood pressure, high cholesterol, different things like that. But if your doctor tells you to take a medicine, you know, uh, to me, six and seven are kind of kind of together, is make sure you're taking your medications as prescribed. Um, there's a reason that they are a doctor and you are not. Uh, so making sure that you follow their, their advice there. So, and then uh, number eight is kind of to sum it up, to be a team player. I can tell you what to do. Your doctor can tell you what to do, but you need to, you know, reciprocate. You need to tell us what do you need from us. You need to ask any questions that you might have. You need to play an active role in making decisions. So yes, your doctor can give you advice, but you are the one who decides that, yes, I'm going to take that medication, or yes, I'm going to try this uh, exercise regimen, or yes, I'm going to do this. Now, don't lie to your doctor. There's, there's absolutely no point. My dad would do that. He, the doctor, I think, put him on high blood pressure pills and gave him the prescription, and he went and re he filled it, and he never, ever took a single pill, okay? Why waste the doctor's time? I mean, just say, look, doc, I don't want to do pills. You got another idea? I mean, just be upfront and honest with him. Don't waste the time where you come back to the next appointment. He's like, how are those pills working for you? You know, well, they're not because I haven't been taking them. You know, just be honest. Maybe he can give you another idea if the, the pills are, are not uh, good. So. Um, so just play an active role in that. And all of the other steps, that means, you know, trying to get some, some good sleep, trying to stop uh, smoking, trying to eat better. Um, those are different things that you can do. I can't make you do it. So uh, that's what it means about being a team player. 
So again, uh, there's different handouts specifically just on the heart health issues. So this one is on how to control cholesterol because cholesterol is one of the you know, top issues that, that we have with heart issues. So again, understanding co what cholesterol is, okay? Cholesterol comes from two different sources. Your body makes enough cholesterol. Your body makes all the cholesterol that it needs. Unfortunately, we get cholesterol, uh, a lot of it from our food, specifically animal products, okay? Um, and there is good cholesterol. We call it the HDL, the good cholesterol. And the way I know the difference is the HDL is the happy cholesterol and uh, the LDL is the, the bad because it's the lousy cholesterol. So, um, but understanding. So if your doctor tells you, you know, you're high in cholesterol, they're probably talking about your overall total cholesterol. And that's kind of when you put those two together, you add them together, and then you also add your uh, triglycerides. And that's the most common type of fats that are found in the body. The reason, um, you know, the, the LDL is so bad is because that's the cholesterol that is sticking to your arteries. It's, it's you know, building up and creating plaque which can cause a blockage, which can cause a heart attack or a stroke or whatever. Having good uh, HDL, the good cholesterol, helps prevent that bad cholesterol from sticking, okay? So you, you need a, a good, good balance there. And the ways you do that, again, is always to track it. When you go, pay attention. When you go get blood done and you're our doctor, oh, your cholesterol is this, asking, okay, doc, what does that mean, you know? Um, because, you know, they have different numbers of what it should be or what it shouldn't be. But for you, what does that mean? Okay. Because if you're a little bit older, you're a little bit overweight, even though it's bad cholesterol, it might be, you're in a pretty good range considering your age, considering your heart health, you know, uh, family, family issues, considering your lack of, you know, inactivity and what you can do to fix that, you know, ask them while you're there. But the tips they're going to give you are the same thing that I've already given you. Eat better, move more, pay attention to the fats that you're, you're cooking with or you're, you're eating. You know, are you eating a lot of animal products? Can you just eat less? I'm never going to tell you to, you know, you have to cut something completely out of your diet. I'm never going to tell you to be a vegetarian. I'm never going to tell you that you can't go to a fast food or restaurant again because you're going to see me do all of those things myself. Um, and it's not realistic for me to, to say those things to you. Um, I would love if you could quit smoking if you are a smoker. Um, to me, that's definitely one of the things because smoking can cause so many issues, not to mention heart disease. You know, it's a problem with, uh, you know, any kind of illness. Uh, smoking makes you more at risk for having all these illnesses. So, um, so overall, the whole eating smart and what is that? What does that mean? Um, I give you some seven steps. So getting active, I mentioned that 150 minutes there, eating better. That basically means you can look at this plate right here, the bright, colorful plates. You know, are you eating what we call eat a rainbow? You know, you've got a mixture of all five food groups on your plate. Uh, you've got good portion sizes too. So a lot of people, you might be eating well, but you're eating too much of it. So trying to get smaller plates, smaller bowls, smaller glasses, if you're, you're drinking things. So that way, even if you're eating quote unquote bad food, you know, are you eating less of it? So that's a suggestion I give to people. If you're going to eat out, um, okay. You know, again, I know you're going to do it. So maybe can you get the kids meal? Can you get, uh, you know, what, what can you do? You know, can you, can you get, okay, you want to get a burger, don't get the Baconator where it's like double hamburgers and double layers of bacon, just get a normal hamburger. Um, so little things like that. And hopefully you'll notice that it'll help you lose weight. And then there are those three evil trifectas that we talk about, uh, your, your, your salt, your sugar, and your fats because those three things are going to increase your cholesterol, increase your blood pressure and increase your blood sugar. And we want them all to go down. Okay. So that means watching the, the fat sugars and salts that, that you're eating. And so we're going to talk more about eating, eating healthy for your, your heart. Those are going to be kind of the, the next slides. So um, this slide specifically gives you information on how much that you're supposed to be eating. So 
we often refer to people, we talk about serving size. Well, a lot of people don't know what a serving is because unless you're reading nutrition labels, which is definitely something we, we recommend, uh, you're supposed to get about two and a half cups of veggies, two cups of fruits, and uh, about three to six ounces of whole grains, um, three cups of dairy, uh, one to two servings of, of protein, and then about three tablespoons of, of oil. So to talk more about each of these, um, again, you have a measuring cup. So if I say two cups of fruit, then making sure, you know, do you have a measuring cup? Do you, do you have where you can measure how much fruit you're, you're getting? But if you, you don't, I mean, even just the size of like a tennis ball for like an apple or something like that, that's a serving of uh, fruit. If you don't have a measuring cup, then we always tell you your servings are in your hands. Okay, uh, a cup of something is about your your balled up fist. So you can kind of, you know, think about a tennis ball, but you can also ball up your fist. That's about a cup. So a cup of veggies or fruit or a, a cup of milk if you're doing dairy products. If you're doing protein, uh, a serving is uh, about three to five ounces and that's the palm of your hand or a deck of cards. So any of these visual things can kind of help you ballpark it. But if you're going out to eat and you're getting a big old steak and it's, you know, eight, 10, 12 ounces, then you're getting possibly double the amount of servings that you need. So yeah, go out to eat for Valentine's this weekend, cut your steak in half and bring half of it home. It'll help you save money because you've got leftovers and it'll also help your, your waistline and your heart health. Uh, we prefer if you're cooking with um, unsaturated oils, so the olive oil, the canola oil, the peanut oil, those kinds of things are much better than butter, than margarine. When you're do eating breads, I'm definitely a bread person. Again, I will never tell you to uh, cut out bread. A lot of people are on these crazy low carb diets. Um, they are not what we want you to do because carbs are good for you. There are good carbs, there are bad carbs. You know, uh, it's okay to have a piece of bread or a sandwich or something like that. It's better than having uh, a, you know, jelly cream filled donut with sprinkles and icing all on the top. There's a big difference between those two types of carbs. Um, but veggies, a lot of veggies, even the good veggies are carbs. Fruit, fruit are completely carbs because they provide uh, sugar to your body. They're natural sugars, but they are a carb. So people who are eating these, I'm cutting out all carbs. There's very little veggies you can eat. You can't have any fruits and you definitely can't have any grains. So that, there are three food groups completely that you are cutting out if you are cutting out carbs. That's not what we want you to do. There are five food groups for a reason. You need all five because they're going to help give you things. Now, uh, this is what I, I, you know, healthy eating looks like. A lot of bright colors. Yes, you can have your, your grains. You can have your rice, your breads, your cereals, things like that. Now, on the previous slide, it says uh, servings, or it says how many you need is about six ounces of grains. Half of those, three ounces of them, are supposed to be whole grains. So the problem is, is most of us are eating about, you know, six, seven ounces of grains. That's not a problem for us. The problem is, is only about a half of one ounce is whole grain. So we're eating, you know, we're just eating the wrong type of grains. We're not eating the whole grains. So just making that simple switch from, you know, the white bread to the, the whole grain bread or, you know, the multi-grain, if you can't get the whole, as close as you can get it to the whole grain because they've taken out, they processed it is what it is. They processed it and processed it. So they took all the good, healthy stuff and uh, out and, and just left you with the leftovers. We don't want you to do that. We want you to get the whole grain. So, um, and then your fruits and veggies, that should be half of your plate. According to the My Plate, fruits and veggies are half your plate. So you can see from this picture, it's very bright. It's very colorful. Um, I don't care how you get your fruits and veggies. If they're fresh, frozen, or canned, or even dried, that's perfectly fine. Now, what I care about is what you do to them. So, you know, even a baked potato, which is a starchy vegetable, is okay occasionally. But it's 
how much, you know, uh, butter, bacon, cheese, sour cream, chive, you know, all that stuff that we put on a loaded baked potato. It's like having a salad and then you smother it with ranch dressing. So you took something that was healthy and you made it unhealthy. So don't uh, do that. And again, a lot of people also, you hear them talking about carbs and you hear them talking about processed foods. Like, oh, I don't eat any processed foods. Yes, you do. Most of the food that you have at the grocery store is processed in some way. I mean, even the ground meat, it has been ground up, okay? You know, it doesn't look like that coming off the animal. It's a, it's a slab of meat and they've ground it up. That's processing, okay? If it's been through a plant in any shape or form, it has been processed. But what it's talking about more is the things that are in the boxes and the bags and the cans. These have been processed even more. The, the grains that are not whole grains, those have been processed a lot more. So how can you get a, a simpler product? So the simple way of thinking about it is you have an apple, you have applesauce and you have an apple pie, okay? Either way you look at those, you're getting fruit. You're getting an apple, you're getting your daily serving of fruit there, okay? But the apple is a lot, you know, it's not processed, okay? You've processed it a little bit to get applesauce. You might've even put a little bit of extra sugar in there. Apple pie, you can't even see any parts of the apple really. It's completely covered in, in crust and sugar and you know all that other stuff. So eating more uh, cleanly, you know, clean, okay? Is what we want you uh, to do. Eating more simple there. Um, Thinking about when you're looking at the other foods. So you know fruits and veggies definitely, and you know whole grains because whole grains give you fiber. When you're looking at your meat and you're looking at your dairy, um, and in fact, the meat, it's not a meat category. It's a protein category. You don't have to have any meat to get your protein for the day. I know most people prefer uh, getting their protein through meat, and that's fine, but getting the healthier cuts of meat taking the skin off your, your poultry, eating more fish that isn't fried fish. These are simple ways of, of doing it. Now, again, I'm not telling you can't ever have red meat, but can you, um, can you eat just less of it? Can you eat some more fish? Can you eat some more uh, poultry? Specifically, the poultry is the white cuts of meat because those are the leaner cuts. Um, but even if you're eating like me, I love the dark cuts of meat best, but I'll at least if I go, even if I go to a fast food place, I'm going to take the skin off. So that's a little bit less fat, a little bit less calories than, um, you know, than I need. When I'm uh, doing dairy products, can I get the low fat or the non-fat version, whether it's yogurt, whether it's cheese, milk, any of that. If you're drinking milk, can you, instead of drinking whole milk, can you get down to the one or 2%? Um, can you get non-fat yogurt and then I'll get some fruit and put it in there? Uh, cause I don't like non-fat yogurt. It, it plain, it tastes very bland to me, but I want that. I want some fresh, uh, fruit or I'm frozen, whatever you want, but get some fruit and it has natural sugar and I'll put that in there. So instead of getting strawberry yogurt, I'm going to get plain non-fat yogurt and I'll put strawberries in it. I'll put some whole grain granola in there as well. So I've got a nice, simple, easy breakfast and it's low cost and it's giving me three out of my five food groups there. Um, so the things that you need to limit, of course, are those salt, sugar, and fat. So the, the, um, and it, it talks about the processed meat. So the hot dogs, the, the hamburgers, the deli meats, even the turkey and the ham, those things are very highly processed. Uh, staying away from those things. Um, I'll make me a, uh, like a sandwich wrap or something. And it might not even have any meat in it. If I have some leftover chicken from dinner last night, I might put that in there. I might put some roasted veggies. I also, instead of using mayonnaise, I'll get some hummus. Um, it's just ground up chickpeas, but it's a, it's a nice like spread that I can put on there. That is protein. You can put peanut butter. That's protein. So without even needing meat, you can still have some kind of a thing. And it's got different flavors to the hummus. So um, the, uh, it's got the, like the pine nut hummus, the roasted red pepper hummus, it's got cucumber. I mean, they've got all kinds of flavors. So find which ones you like and what works for you because it's very important to add color to our, uh, to our diet. And um, not only is this gonna do a lot of good for, for your body, it's giving you so many nutrients, so many vitamins and minerals, but that means if you're eating more of the good stuff, hopefully you're eating less of the bad stuff. 
Um, because I have people that will talk and they'll come to our classes and we'll tell them, okay, this is about how many calories of food you need per day. And they're like, oh my God, I'm going to starve myself. I'm like, no, no, we don't want you to starve yourself. But there's a big difference between having a donut that's 300 calories and having a big plate of broccoli that's 300 calories, okay? The broccoli is going to fill you up. Um, you know, it's very filling. The donut, you're gonna be hungry in an hour, okay? You're, and and you're gonna have wasted all those calories. Yes, it'll taste good, but you'll still be hungry. And so you'll have to eat more of the food to, to feel just as full. So that's the problem is we're eating more of the high calorie foods. Um, so trying to get the low calorie ones, which are typically the fruits and veggies. Again, as long as you aren't doing something bad to them, you know, and putting something unhealthy, watch your condiments, your, your sides, your dressings, all of those kinds of things. Watch your cooking methods. So even if you're, you know, uh, you know, roast okra instead of frying it. Just the same thing with your meats. I'll grill my meats instead of frying them. Um, and it'll just help my entire body feel good. It'll give me more energy and I'll be less at risk for those health conditions like heart disease, like diabetes, like even just being obese. Um, and I mentioned that your fruits and veggies or your foods that give you a lot of good nutrients. So I put this handout on there is because you can kind of see, it gives you some examples of each of the food groups, but on the, the far right of the slide, it talks about the key nutrients that you're getting. Because so many of us, uh, you know, we probably take a vitamin or a supplement of some kind, especially if you do have some health issues, your doctor might be, you know, oh, take a calcium pill, or, you know, I know when I was pregnant years ago, folic acid or something like that. And those pills are okay, but they're supposed to be a supplement. So they're supposed to be in addition to the food that you're getting. It's not supposed to be a replacement. Unfortunately, too many of us eat unhealthy foods. So we're not getting the nutrients that we need. So our body is lacking, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, potassium, different things like that. And you might be thinking, well, what, what does that matter? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. There's been uh, some research showing that a lot of the people who have been coming down with COVID are vitamin D deficient. You know, it's not a, like a cause of it. It's just you are more at risk for, you know, uh, getting really sick with COVID or for being able to contract it is because you're vitamin D deficient. You're not getting enough vitamin D. And we haven't been this year because one of the biggest ways we get vitamin D besides, you know, our dairy category is the sunlight. So being outside, a lot of us haven't gone places. You know, we didn't go on vacations or go to the beach or whatever this summer, but we just didn't even go outside. So getting more vitamin D, if you're not getting it outside, getting it, you know, in your dairy products, um, some of the other things you can drink, like if you're, uh, or the ways you can get your vitamins and stuff is when I buy my orange juice, it'll say, you know, vitamin D fortified or calcium or whatever. So they've taken my orange juice and they made it even better for me because they've made sure it's got some, some good vitamin D along with the vitamin C in there. So if you are deficient in a particular uh, nutrients and you need to help with that, please just let me know. I do get contacted every once in a while that somebody says, Hey, my doctor told me I'm low in potassium. What's some good food or the reverse is true. I've got a health condition and potassium or something is bad for it. What are foods that have potassium? So I can kind of avoid those. So let me know if you do have any of those kinds of issues or something in particular, but if you are taking supplements for some of these vitamins and minerals, you know, look at this list and there's an, is there another way you can get those from your, um, your foods? Okay. So eating healthy doesn't stop no matter whether you're at work, whether it's lunchtime, dinner time or, or anything. So, excuse me. Um, so I've got this slide here because, you know, like me, there's a lot of people who, um, you know, are still working and uh, we, we eat lunch at work. And a lot of times there is something available, whether it's a vending machine, there's a cafeteria or a food service or something that that's where people get their food from. But more than half struggle to get a healthy meal at work, especially if you're having a stressful day, you tend to, you're less likely to eat healthy if you're feeling stressed because you tell yourself, you know what? I deserve to go out to eat lunch today. You know, it doesn't take much to talk you into to eating. A friend says, 
you know, hey, I've got my lunch, but I really would love to go. So yes, yes, I will go with you. You know, they barely have even gotten it out before you are uh, agreeing to go out to lunch with them. So I hear that a lot, that me and my coworkers always go out to eat. And I understand the bonding experience, but I will also be that person that, yeah, let's go out to eat. And I'll sit there and I'll eat my leftovers or my sandwich right in front of everyone else while they're eating their food. Or, um, you know, what can you do to, to make sure you're preparing your foods ahead of time? A lot of people just, I, I ran out of time and I didn't have time to grab me lunch today. So I guess I got to run out and get something. So I'll try to eat, you know, prepare my meals the night before instead of um, right then and there, you know, because I will run out of time in the morning. I'm trying to get the girls ready, get me ready, you know, get everything packed. And even if I made lunch, sometimes I'll forget it, and leave it in my fridge. So trying to make uh, healthier decisions along the day, because if I make a healthy decision at lunch, then I'm more likely to make healthier decisions throughout the day. It's just something that that research has has shown. So if we can eat a little bit healthier than at lunchtime, then hopefully that will spill over into dinner. Not starving yourself, because it'll also be three o'clock, you're starving, and then you go to that vending machine and get something that's unhealthy, and it just defeated the entire purpose of you eating healthy at lunch. One of the ways that you can know if you're eating healthy or not is to read your nutrition labels, especially those processed foods that I talked about that are in bags, boxes, or cans. Um, they all have the, the labels. This is what the new nutritional label looks like. Some products still have the old one. There's just slight differences. Um, it's it's uh, bold and bigger now. You can see, you know, it's got a bigger text with the calories there. So you can't pretend you don't know how many calories are in what you're eating because it's bigger and bold and jumping out there. It also tells you what a serving size is. So you can't pretend, oh, I didn't know I, I wasn't supposed to eat the whole bag. Yes, you did. You know, if you just look at this simple thing. So having a little measuring cup to measure it out is, is really good. And the important thing about a nutritional um, label as well is it tells you about those three evil trifecta things that we talked about. The fat, the salt, and the sugar. Okay, because they're all three right here. And it tells you not only the total fat, it tells you, is it a saturated fat or is it an unsaturated fat? Nine out of 10 people are getting uh, too much sodium. Okay, um, so they're just getting too much salt. So you can see here in the yellow block that we're supposed to get um, about it's recommended we get 1500 milligrams of salt in our uh, you know, daily recommended daily limit, okay? Unfortunately, most people on average are getting 3400, okay? We're getting over double the amount that uh, we need. And 65% of that is coming from the foods that you just bought at the store, okay? It's not coming from that salt shaker. It's coming from the food that you bought. You haven't even added any salt to it there. Um, so looking at those labels, when you're looking at the products, they have this heart check mark system. So is this little label that's over here um, that says it's American Heart certified and has a little check, is this on the product? So I'll notice that on certain products, even in like something like spaghetti sauce, it's, they'll have like a heart smart version of spaghetti sauce. It'll be on certain boxes of cereal or, or different things like that. Um, so just because the more sodium you have in your diet, the higher risk you have for blood high blood pressure, which again can lead to heart disease and to stroke. So um, going further into sodium, there are these are six popular foods that can increase the level of sodium in your, in your diet. Breads and rolls, pizza, sandwiches, your cold cuts and cured meats, your soup, and the burritos and tacos. So looking around at some of these, a lot of them are just um, things you're going to get from a fast food place. You know, you're going to get a lot of bread from your, your Subway sandwich. You're, you might be getting a pizza. Uh, you know, out to, to eat. You might be getting, um, again, if you're getting sub, you're getting your cold cuts and your, your meats there. You might be getting a sandwich or a burger of some kind, but it's, it's again, it's, it's hidden in there. You don't think of 
Subway meals, you know, that they help Jared lose weight. They're very high in salt. They're very low in fat, but they're very high in salt. Okay. So we want to make sure that um, you're not trading, trading one evil for the other because they will, excuse me, um, they will often um, take one bad thing out and put another bad thing in its place. And unfortunately, that's, um, that's not good. And they trick you that way. Because again, Subway will say that all of our uh, sandwiches are six grams. You know, we have this many sandwiches that are six grams or, or less of fat or something. Yeah, they're very low in fat, very high in salt. So understanding the difference. If you're buying soup, uh, first of all, can you make it yourself? You know, we've got several soup recipes if you, if you need to. Um, but just buying not even just soup, but the veggies, making sure you're getting reduced sodium or no salt added cans of soup, just looking at the labels, just the front of the label will, will help you there. Um, cutting down again, just eating out burritos and, and tacos. Uh, a lot of times it's the toppings, you know, it's the things, it's not the meat and, and the bread, it's just we shove it full of all this other stuff. So making sure that you're getting burritos and tacos that are full of veggies and lean sources of protein, you know, a healthier, like a fish taco or something like that. So um, getting good fats. There's a lot of ways to, to get fat. And again, there's good fats and there's bad fats. The bad fats are those uh, saturated fats, those trans fats. You can tell if your product has saturated fats or trans fats by reading the labels. So you want to get the good types of fats, the unsaturated fish. Eating more fish, eating fish twice a week is good because fish have omega-3 fatty acids, which are important. So getting the albacore, the tuna, the, the trout, the mackerel, even sardines or salmon is important to getting your omega-3 uh, fatty acids. So, um, and nuts, nuts are really good too. Even just a, a handful of, of nuts, snacking on nuts and seeds are important. Making sure that you're getting those because they are good fats. They're, if you look at the label, it'll say they're high in total fats, but they're high in unsaturated fats, which are the good heart healthy fats. Eating some avocado as, as well is good. Avocado is one of those things that are good fats. And checking your oils. The good choices are oils are those avocado oils, uh, canola oil, peanut oil, and olive oil are ones we use um, because they're good in uh, fats, but they're not too expensive. So uh, to me, okay. So um, making sure that you're getting the good fats, but you're also not getting high salt and not getting high amounts of sugar. So um, is there any way that you can reduce the amount of sugar in your food products, whether it's using less in your, your baking, again, less condiments, dressing, sauces, those kinds of uh, things. Um, soft drinks, of course. Soft drinks is one of the, the top ways that we are getting our, um, our soda and our, our sweetness in our things is we're just drinking too much soft drinks. We're drinking too much sweet tea. You know, we're from the South and unfortunately those things are uh, not good from us, for us. Uh, coffees and teas, those things, it's not that it's bad to um, drink these things. It's just, what are you putting in it? You know, uh, my husband loves coffee. There's no way I'm going to get him to stop drinking coffee or to drink less coffee. But I've had to talk to him about the amount of sugar and how much creamer he's putting in his coffee. So cutting back even just a little bit, even if it's just, hey, I was using two tablespoons, now I'm using one. Maybe eventually you can get down to where you're using, you know, none and you're drinking it black. Or can you, um, like your, uh, maybe your waters, you could in infuse it with something else. So putting lemon, uh, limes, cucumbers, whatever in your water, even putting strawberries is good to give it a, a little bit of flavoring. You could even pour a little splash of 100% fruit juice in your water to help get it uh, a little bit sweetener, sweeter, but you're not drinking a whole glass of juice. You're just putting a splash of it in there. Because it's healthier for you to eat an orange than it is to drink a glass of orange juice. You're gonna get more fiber from the actual orange. You're gonna get less uh, sugar or less, definitely less added sugar. And you're also gonna get less calories. 
just by eating your fruit instead of drinking it. So the same thing with the coffee. Some people will add cinnamon or mint or nutmeg or just all kinds of you know different things um, to, to rethink their drinks because that is where you're getting a lot of empty calories. So what changes can you make to that? Same thing with your desserts, eating less, you know, eating them less often, eating smaller amounts of them. Um, and, you know, can you get something instead of making an apple pie, we made an apple crisp at my house. So it doesn't have the pie crust, which has a lot of the fat and butter and other stuff in it. Um, you know, we just used oats and uh, put apples, oats, uh, cinnamon, uh, brown sugar, and um, you know, kind of whip that up together, baked it in the oven, or you can even do it in the, in the microwave. So, but we're giving you some suggestions on how to eat healthier. But I mentioned that not only eating healthy, but physical activity is important. They're kind of hand in hand there. Um, you know, you can do one and not see a lot of results, or, and you can do the other one and not see a lot of results. But if you kind of do the two of them, it's kind of like that, that swinging pendulum. You know, you, you got to make sure that you're, you're getting both in. So I mentioned adults are supposed to exercise about 150 minutes a week. So whatever you can get in is great. So this uh, handout there just reminds you that every movement counts. So somebody was asking earlier about uh, a treadmill, you know, versus walking. I don't care, just walk, you know. Um, now this does talk about how, um, you know, doing different things. So it might be like, you know what, I don't wanna walk a 5K because that's a, a long way. And that's, you know, an hour or so out of my day, we'll go, you know, play tennis with somebody at, at one of the parks and rec fields or do some, um, it says 10 minutes of stretching is like walking the length of a football field. So if your knees are hurting you today, just sit there and do some, you know, stretches, stretch your arms, get some little light weights. Somebody also asked about uh, hand weights. You know, you can, they're, they're typically very inexpensive at you know Walmart or whatever, so you can get some hand weights. But whatever you have around your house, you know, a canned good product is about a pound. So you know, even if you're just carrying one pound weights, get two hand, uh, um, two canned goods. Get a bottle of water. That's a pound. Um, if you want something bigger, uh, one of the things I use, kind of like a, a kettlebell, is one of those ball you know things that you pull up this way. I'll get my detergent bottle. Uh, those things are always full or always heavy. Um, or if you get a gallon of water or milk or, or something like that, um, even if you, even if it's an old gallon of milk that you've already drank, um, you know, fill it up with, with water from, you know, the, the, the hose or the sink or whatever else. And you've got some weights there, just make sure the tops are on uh, good, but that's simple ways. Whatever you have around your house is, is, is a good weight. Um, you can count, uh, you know, chores. I mean, I, I do, you know, tell people that, that yeah, uh, vac 20 minutes of vacuuming is like walking a mile. The problem is, is you need to get 150 minutes of physical activity in addition to your normal daily routine, okay? So um, if there's things that you don't normally do, like I don't normally always go out and, and garden or plow up weeds or, or something like that, then that can count towards your 150 minutes. But if you get up and every day you, you know, well, I walk to the mailbox and walk back. Well, that's probably something you do every day. Your body's got accustomed to that. So you can't count that as part of your 150 minutes of daily movement. You know, you need to up, step it up. And that intensity level needs to get up a little bit more. So break it up in shorter amounts as well. If, if that's what you have to do, do 10 minutes, three times a day, five uh, minutes, six times a day. However you can work it in is perfectly fine. And choose what works for you. So if you do like walking or you like the treadmill, that's perfectly fine. They do recommend kind of alternating it. They call them using circuits. Um, so, you know, kind of doing like a high intensity, short burst of energy and then, you know, slowing it down a little bit. So this handout talks about choosing three to four exercises from the different categories that it shows you and alternating it. So you're doing those heart healthy, get your cardiovascular system pumping kind of exercises, whether it's jumping jacks or uh, high knees or, you know, squat jumps or stuff like that for just about 30 seconds in short bursts there, just alternate it for about 30 seconds, do a cardio, then do a strength training one and do that for uh, three minutes. So it's gonna be a total of six different exercises that, that you're gonna do. 
And then you can repeat that same circuit of six exercises for three minutes about two to three times just to give you short bursts of energy. So you can exercise three minutes here and there just doing some of these different exercises and they don't require equipment. You can, if you know, if you have a hard time with your knees, there's a lot of chair exercises. There's a lot of videos online with YouTube or even, uh, I know our Person County Parks and Rec has some group fitness classes that are online that are very inexpensive, but there's a lot of good videos for, you know, exercises for people with diabetes, exercises for people with bad knees, you know, um, just Google whatever you're interested in into YouTube and it'll have some good, you know, walking exercises because I don't want to go outside because it's raining today or something like that. So hopefully you just get up and get moving. But don't forget about some of the other things that are important. So yes, eating right and exercising are important, but a sleep can also affect your health too. And unfortunately, one third of us don't get enough sleep. You need about seven to nine hours of sleep each night. Unfortunately, we're getting too, uh, too little and that makes you more at risk for some of these things. So you never would have thought you would be more at risk for heart disease because you don't sleep well. So trying to make sure that you are sleeping well because I mean, not only can it cause accidents or other stuff, but it can cause weight gain <clears throat> because you are, um, you're, if your body doesn't get enough sleep, then you're, it triggers your brain and it makes it crave some of the salty, greasy, fatty stuff, which is not what we need. So <clears throat> getting enough sleep about seven to nine hours, excuse me, uh, is, is important there. It also helps with stress. So slow down, <coughs> take things easy, make sure you're getting your sleep, try to let things go, call somebody that makes you laugh, stay connected, whether it's in a class or a virtual program. Um, I know our senior centers are getting ready to open back up. I think their gym, any way that you can get out and, and be around people. Um, <coughs> excuse me, whether it's, family members, um, if it's a, again, just going outside and talking to your neighbor, just, we are very social creatures and it makes us depressed and it makes us stressed if we don't have that uh, daily activity with people. So uh, I know it's made me that way. I've been at home for, you know, almost a, a year now with my children doing virtual school the entire time. And, um, you know, even, even if they're not having problems with school, even if they're not fighting, it's just the normal, I need an adult to talk to. Okay, I get the mommy, she took mine or she touched me, you know, whatever. It's just like an adult to talk to. So doing things that can help you decrease your stress because things can happen, whether you stressy, you eat too much. There's some people that eat too little and it can actually slow your metabolism down, which can um, derail your weight loss program, so trying to uh, decrease your stress, stress in any way you can. That might be uh, meditation, stopping and, and reading, just sitting back and uh, slowing down. Slowing down as you're eating, slowing down as you're um, <coughs> just relaxing before bed so you can sleep well. If you, all you're doing is thinking about all the crazy things that, that have uh, been happening or going on, then uh, you're not going to be able to sleep at night. Even if it's, I watched a crazy TV show uh, right before I went to bed and now my mind can't relax. So it talks about different ways to, to relax. Whatever is good for you. If you like cooking, gardening, just, you know, even just taking deep breaths, reading a funny book, watching a funny uh, video, movie, uh, calling a friend, writing a Valentine's card or letter to someone is, is always good. There's so many different things you can do. Pick something over the next week. Uh, in fact, February is... Also heart health month, but it's random acts of kindness month. So do, do something good for somebody else that will make you feel good and hopefully uh, help you feel better uh, and overall with your health too. And then one of the last things we talk about with um, being healthy is oftentimes people have this mindset that it's too expensive to eat healthy. So the uh, we do have information about how to shop smart and save. Meal planning is a great way to do that. Make a shopping list and stick to it. Check your pantry out to make sure you're not buying more stuff that you don't need. 
Um, I keep my receipts and I'll look through them at the end of the month and be like, ooh, I probably wasted too much money on this or I shouldn't have done this. Um, I don't collect coupons because um, I typically use my store brand because that's cheaper for me. But if you like coupons, go for that. Um, I do have a uh, the virtual program with Food Lion, the shop, earn and save. So they'll give me virtual coupons for things that, that I buy. Um, it's just an app on my, my store. It's just a Food Lion app on my phone. But I'm always comparing prices. I will buy in bulk. I buy store brand instead of the... Um, the, the name brand, and I don't get anything at the checkout aisle. I just kind of go in there because they've got all this candy and all these chips and all this other stuff. So I also don't take my children to the grocery store with me either because they'll see all that stuff. But if you need more information about uh, budgeting or saving, our next workshop is going to be two weeks from today. We're having our lunch and learns every uh, second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And it'll be about developing a household and food budget. It'll be on Tuesday, February 3rd, again at noon. So uh, this program uh, is from the, or this workshop is gonna be from the More In My Basket program. So it, it talks about how to, if you need food assistance, such as SNAP benefits, which is formerly known as food stamps. But this workshop is gonna tailor a, more, more about specifically developing a household and food budget. So even if you don't need food assistance, you can still um, save money when you're shopping. Uh, whether it's on food or, or other stuff, it'll teach you a little bit about meal planning and thinking ahead. So that'll be our next workshop. I will have the registration link for that workshop in the email I send out to you shortly that we'll, we'll have on that. Does anyone else have any other uh, questions or comments? I think I've kind of answered all the questions in the chat as uh, we went through. So I will let you unmute my, yourself if you have uh, a further question. Um, if not, again, it's all about you, you know, the result. If you do some of these steps, even just a few of the tips, if you take a couple of them and just start small, um, you'll hopefully feel healthier and have a, a better quality of life, less risk for heart disease or diabetes or even cancer as well. And again, there's a lot more information, recipes on the American Heart Association's website, which I will share with you. Jennifer. Not everyone have a uh, wonderful day and uh, enjoy the rest of your week and um, a good heart health month. Jennifer.